My name is Shai Schmelzer, I'm part of the Oracle Visual Builder Cloud Service Team, and in this demonstration we're going to show you how to integrate processes defined in the Oracle Process Cloud Service into Visual Builder Cloud Service applications. If you go to Visual Builder Cloud Service and you got this as part of Integration Cloud, then when you click this button, you'll be able to go back and see the rest of the functionality that is available inside Integration Cloud. One of those functionalities is the Process Builder, which allows you to define processes that you can run to get approval, for example, or various other long-running processes. I'm going to show you how to take, for example, this travel approval process, which was created with one of the quick starts from Process Cloud Service, and integrate it back into your Visual Builder Cloud Service application. We're starting with an application that is partly built already. This application has a business object called Requests. It has a bunch of fields. And then we have a page in a flow okay, that shows us all the requests that we have. Right now we don't have any requests available, so the page is going to show up with an empty list. Let's add another create page that would allow us to add travel requests. We choose the fields that we want to show, so for example first name, last name, the reason for travel, when is it starting, when is it ending, the cost, and our email. This creates this page. Alright, so now we want to hook this up into a process that is defined in the Oracle Process Cloud. To do that, you can go to the process part of your application definition. First thing you'll need to do is define your process server if you're not part of Oracle Integration Cloud. If you are, then this would be already set for you and you can test the connection. Once the connection is successful, you can go over and start to add processes. So, click on the plus sign and you'll see a list of all the processes available for you on the Process Cloud service. Uh, you can also indicate whether you want to show test instances or not. We'll pick up this process, which is still a test instance. We'll give it an alias, so we'll call it the Travel Approval, for example, and click Add. This has added the process into our application. Here we can get more information on the process, and we can also get code that will be useful for interacting with the various aspects of the process. I'll show you how to use some of this code later on. But we're starting by doing a simple integration manually. So we're looking at the Create Request page, and if we switch to design mode and look at the save button and the action flow behind it, we'll see that this section right now saves the data into our business object. We can also indicate that after saving the data into our business object, we actually want to start a process. In the action flow set of operations, you'll see a bunch of operations related to processes, including one that allows you to start a process. Like, let's take this one and add it over here. We'll select the process, and here is the process we just added. And as you can see, this process ex expects a set of parameters. Let's assign them. It's very easy to pick up fields from our page and just map them to fields in the process. Once the field are mapped, we can click Save, and we have the process invocation happening here. We can add another notification after we start the process. In the notification, 
we can show the results of starting the process. We have a bunch of information over here that we can access. Um, we're going to show you the ID of the process that was created. Right, so this is enough for us to go over and start processes. Let's run our little application. We'll create a request, fill out the information. click Save. This would go off and invoke both the insert into our business object and would start the process. There we go. This is the process ID and the validation that the record is now in the database which we can also see on this page. So this was a basic invocation but there's more that you can do with processes. Let's go back into the design mode and look back at our process flow. So in our application, in our page flow, we're going to create another page and call it Show Processes. And for this page, I'm going to show you how to leverage the built-in code provided by VBCS when you look at the process. So when you look at the process again, you have a bunch of things that you can do with it, all sorts of operations, and we're going to uh, look at process instances for this process. Okay, uh, You can get again information here. I'm going to just go into the HTML and copy this text into our new page. Okay, We'll switch into code mode and for the UI we'll paste the HTML then we can switch over to look at the JSON file that defines the page go back to the definition here pick up the JSON and paste it inside this page inside this section now we can go back into our visual view and switch to live mode what you'll see here is that we're actually accessing and showing you the process instances. As you can see, we have two instances of the process, including the one we just created a minute ago in our application. If we click on it, we can get more information about when it was created, etc. Alright, one more thing to show you in our application. I'll go back into our web application definition and we'll create another page we'll call this one tasks so on each page we're going to drop a list view and hook it up to data coming from our processes we can look for the example at tasks as a user of Process Cloud Service, I have a bunch of tasks that I need to complete. Let's look at some of them. We'll bring in the label, the description, the priority, and the current state. As we can see, we have a bunch of travel approvals assigned to us. Another thing we can add here is a task action. We can choose whether to include system actions or not, and the label. We'll keep it simple and just include the core functionality on our request. If we again look at our live mode, we can see the travel requests. We can pick one of them choose an action, such as approve or reject, and submit that action. As we can see, now we don't have another instance running. One of them has been completed. If we we'll go back to our um, 
show process page and refresh the view here you would see that one of the instances is already gone because it got approved. So those are the basic things that you can do with process integration in the UI. One more thing to mention here. If you're working with business objects, you can actually hook up process invocation into your business object directly without the involvement of the UI. For example, on our travel request, we can create a new trigger for example, every time that we insert a travel request, we call it start a pool. Then in the step, we can actually add an action to start the process. Okay. We can choose the process and then we need to pass in information to the process. Here we have access directly to the fields in our business object. So again, we can use the same approach we used before to start to map up business object fields directly into the fields in your process invocation. This allows you to invoke the process automatically from behind the scene and still build UI on top of it when you need to. So those are the basic things you need to know about process integration inside Visual Builder Cloud Service.